Hi, welcome to Mimi's Math Channel. Today, I will demonstrate how to use the multiplication rule for independent and dependent events. As you can see, I have an independent event formula, which is the probability of A and B, where and is used in the word problem. That means that you're going to multiply. And so that's going to equal the probability of A times the probability of B. If I have the dependent events formula, it's similar with one difference. The probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has already occurred. So you've seen this in another video, the conditional probability video. For example one, I'm using a standard deck of cards, which has 52 cards in it and a six-sided cube, which we know as a die. And that just is a singular version of dice. Dice is more than one of those cubes and it has six sides. So what is the probability of rolling a three on the die? And, and is that keyword that tells me I'm going to multiply, picking a card with a Q on it. So two things are happening here. I'm going to roll the die. And what's the probability of picking a three? Well, there's only one three on the die. So it's one out of six because it's a six-sided die. Well, my first probability is one out of six. And the word and tells me to multiply. Then how many cards do I have? And there's 52 cards in the standard deck. So out of those 52 cards, how many of those cards have a Q on it? Well, Q represents a queen. So you have a queen of spade, queen of clubs, queen of diamonds, and a queen of hearts. So a total of four. When we are multiplying fractions, we want to multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. You can also simplify this if you wanted to. You could have cross simplified the four and the six because both of those are divisible by two, or you can just go ahead and multiply it across. If you multiply it across, you're going to have four and four out of 312. And then you want to put it in a simplified version. So if I were to further simplify that, I can divide both of those by four. And so the top is going to be one. And then the bottom portion is going to be 78. I want to leave this in the simplest form of what I started with. So I started with fractions. So I want to leave it as a fraction, unless my directions tell me something different. Now, in terms of whether or not this is an independent or a dependent event, this is an independent event because this event had no nothing to do with the second one. So they're independent of each other. For example, two, if I'm given that word. So if or given means that I'm going to use that conditional probability portion. So therefore, this is going to be dependent. So if the probability of 10th graders is equal to 0.35, the probability of anyone who plays video games is equal to 0.48. And the probability of someone who plays video games, given that they're 10th graders, is equal to 0.62. What is the probability of a 10th grader and plays video games? So again, I have to keep in mind that those that are playing video games in this case are only 10th graders. So that's why it says given 10th graders or if a 10th grader. So using my formulas for dependent, that is going to be the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has happened. So these two will always be the same. So if I have an A to begin with, I'm going to have a A in my denominator. And that's going to equal the probability of A and B. So substituting what I know, the probability of A, which is given, is going to be 0.35. This is the 10th graders because it says if. I know that's the one that's going to be in the denominator. So 0 0.35 times the probability of B given that A has happened. And so that was this one. is given an in information here. So 0 0.62. And multiply Applying that out, I will get a fraction. However, since I started with a decimal, that's how I want to leave my answer. And so that answer is going to be 0 0.217. And unless your directions say otherwise, go ahead and leave it the way that you originally started. For example, three, Krisha has two boxes. Box one contains three red, two black, four blue, and two silver cones. Box two contains one gold and one brown brush. What is the probability that Krisha will select a red cone from box one and a gold brush from box two? So what I would suggest that you do is go ahead and count up the total of box one. So three plus two plus four plus two, that is going to give us a total of 11 cones. So out of the first box, Box, what's your probability of selecting a red home? So out of 11, red is three. And then and tells me I'm multiplying. From box two, I want to select a 
gold brush. So how many brushes are there all together? There's two. Out of the two, how many are gold? One. So again, I'm just going to keep it in the same form that it's currently in. It's, it's already fractioned. So I'm just going to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominator, and leave it in the simplest form. In this case, three times one is three. 11 times two is 22. I cannot simplify this any further. And this will be an independent situation because it did not matter that I chose a comb out of the first box that had nothing to do with the brushes in the second box. So that was an independent situation. The last example, while in a dark room, Colin decides to pull two socks out of a washing machine. He remembers that the laundry load contained three white, one black, and two blue socks. What is the probability that he will pull out two white socks on his first two tries? So I see that I'm trying to do two things. So the first time I am trying to see out of the entire amount of socks that I have in the laundry load, what are my chances of pulling out a white sock? So let's count them. We have three whites, one black, and two blue. And that is a total of six. So out of six, what's his probability of pulling out a white sock first? Well, we have three white socks. And then it says that was the first try out of two tries. So we know we're going to try again. But if he already pulled that sock out, that means that he's not going to put it back. He's trying to pull two socks out. So therefore, if he's already taken one of the socks out, he no longer has six. He now has five. If that sock that he took out was white, well, then he no longer has three white socks. He now has two white socks. So this was his first try and this was his second try. So now what is the probability of him actually pulling out two white socks? So again, you would just go ahead and multiply it. So going across three times two is six, six times five is 30, but the simplest form is going to be dividing both of those by six, which leaves me with one over five. Now, in this case, this was a dependent situation because the second fraction depended on what he chose the first time. All right, that is independent and dependent events. Thumbs up, subscribe, and have an awesome day.